Hi, I'll let you see my shirt before I start. So I am Nikki Haverstock and this is another author advice and I thought I would talk a little bit about Masterclass. Masterclass is um, a website with over 80 classes and it has personally been one of my favorite tools. But I'm going to talk about why it's one of my favorite tools and hopefully give you enough information to where you can decide if it's something useful to you. So the term master class in general just means a high level class and you might see master classes in newsletters or advertising or drafting or whatever. I am referring specifically to masterclass.com which is um, uh, specifically a type of master class. This is the kind that you probably saw a commercial before this episode. Uh, to be clear this is not a sponsored content. I, they don't know I'm doing this. They're not giving me any kind of discount. Um, it's just something that uh, when I was on Facebook a lot, people used to often refer people to me to ask for my opinion about Masterclass because I've been quite vocal about saying that I enjoy them. And I've taken about 20 of them. I started and finished about 20. There's probably another 20 that I'm somewhere going through and doing. So there are 80 plus classes at this point. I started with the Steve Martin class when it first came out, bought it standalone, which was $90 at the time. Soon after that, they rolled out a year subscription for $180, and so they told everyone who had paid $90 for one class, hey, if you want to pay $90, we'll give you a full year. So I did that, did the full year, um, and then by the end of it, I had kind of watched all the classes and so I didn't feel that it was worth another $180 to do another year. They do roll out new classes every month, but um, I just felt that that wasn't really great. I, th I think it was about nine months later, and I'll give you a hint, which is around Black Friday they often have a two for one deal. So I asked around, found someone who wanted to do it and we got a two for one deal and that's by far $90 for a year to pay up front is a phenomenal deal. And I think if you have not done Masterclass, then either the $90 for a year or even the $180 for a year is worth it. If you have money in your budget, you can take away from other things. So part some of the reasons why I personally like them great deal is that I value the opinion of experts. That's just something that I've always done when I want to go and learn something, I seek out people who are leaders in their field. Now, not everybody feels that way, and that is not a criticism of them, because I'm probably missing out on a ton of really great information from people who just don't have the name recognition. Um, there's plenty of great teachers um, in different fields that aren't necessarily successful themselves for doing the same thing. So there's kind of a, you know, you know the phrase, those who can do, those who can't teach. That's actually a bastardization of the original phrase, which was those who can do those who understand teach. And so not everybody who is great at doing what they do can transfer that knowledge in a good way. And I've been a coach and I've been a teacher for years. And so it is, there are plenty of people who know how to do it that are awful teachers. Now, one of the advantages of master class is that it's clear, I shouldn't say clear. My assumption is that they do a lot to work with the particular person to help them bring out their best teaching moments because every class I've taken has been incredibly informative. And I'll go into some of those classes. So the fact that I really value getting information from experts means that this is a particularly useful thing for me. Um, this is also an encouragement for me. So I'm at a point in my career, and not everybody is, and this is not, please hold on with me. So if, you, if I say this and you roll your eyes at, oh, she's so full of herself, just give me a chance to explain which is, um, so anybody who knows, a mastery curve kind of goes like this. And you, at some point you start leveling out and your gains are slower. At first you learn a ton. So I am sort of getting up into here in my curve. It's not that I am so awesome a writer. It's that I know what I need to work on and the only way to work on it is to just give it time. Just continue to write, continue to work on these things. It's not a matter of I haven't, learned what it is I need to work on. I know what I need to work on. It's that I um, I know these things and I'm and I'm applying them. And so that is not uncommon. If you've been writing for years and years and years, or you've been published for years and years and years, the window of information that you still need to learn starts to close down. So for me, if I get three tangible things from these lessons that are new, that's actually a big deal to me. Um, because 
I don't, I, it's, it's hard for me. It's not that I know it all. It's that I've already learned it and now I'm learning to implement it, which is it's still an incredibly difficult thing. Sometimes I hear people say, oh, this writer doesn't even take their own advice. Maybe, maybe that's the case, but maybe they're trying to and this is their best attempt, such as I'm an archer. I know how to do form. I've been coaching for 20 years. Doesn't mean every one of my shots are perfect. Um, I can self-diagnose what I did wrong, but only afterwards. And in the moment, I'm trying to do the best I can. And I think writing's the same way. You know what you're supposed to do, but then when you are done and you step back, you go, oh, I see all the ways that it's fallen short. And over time, hopefully you can kind of close that gap. If you've ever heard Ivory Glasses, the gap, um, then you know just what I'm talking about with that. If not, go Google it. It's great. Um, so for me, if I only learn two or three things, it is useful to me. Um, and so like, for instance, uh, one of the ones, and I can't think of it off the top of my head, talked about pitching bad ideas. Ideas that you think are so terrible that, um, that you, you just dismiss automatically. So one of the, an example of that for me was that when I started my sci-fi book, I called it Space Murder. It was set in space. It was a murder mystery. And so I, labeled my project space murder but when I would talk about it with friends I'd be like yeah I'm this far into space murder and people would be like oh that's such a great name is it really a great name maybe I don't know but I ended up using it because people were like oh I want to hear more about it space murder that's crazy that's and it fits with the genre it's a little cheeky it's a little on the nose which is also how the book is and so an idea that I kind of threw throughout space murder let's just label the file space murder so I can find it ended up becoming um, its eventual title. And that was just because of feedback I got from people. So uh, I think it was, I think it was Dan Brown who said that. Um, that was talking about Aerosmith, Aerosmith having a day where everybody brings in these ideas that they're sure and there's no judgment and there's none of that. I watched um, Shonda Rhimes who, I, I'm not into Grey's Anatomy, I'm not really into dramas, I'm more into sitcoms. Um, I haven't watched Great Anatomy. I haven't, I haven't seen a single episode of Scandal. I haven't seen a single episode of How to Get Away with Murder. Um, I did watch some Grey's Anatomy. I objectively said this is a great show. I just, it just doesn't draw me back. Dramas in general don't. Um, she talked about, she went into depth on how she put together the pilot episode of, I think it was Scandal. Why she made the choices she did how she did that and seeing that process I can't say one thing like this is the one thing I learned but um it made so much sense to me that somewhere inside my brain it became a thing and that's something that I have a hard time with when people say well tell me what you learned in this one class I don't I don't really know what I learned it just was it's just in there and I think there's things you know and when you keep hearing it that idea gets stronger and when you pull it out you go I have a lot of faith in this concept versus like a, a, I say Dan Brown for instance was really great talking about thrillers like don't answer that question you don't have to tell people that you can just put that out there and have people um, like you could have two characters meet and it can be clear they had a past relationship you don't have to tell the reader what that relationship was. You have to answer that question later, that's a promise you're making, but you don't have to do it now. And I, I used that, I listened to that class right before I did Space Murder, and I did that a lot. I was like, you know, since the trial. What trial? I didn't bother explaining right then. I, I don't even know, I have to go back and look. I'm not even sure if I ever fully gave the reader all the information that I had, but that was really useful to me. And so I don't, I haven't read Dan Brown, but I found his really useful. Same with James Patterson, same with David Balducci. I don't read their books, but their lessons were really... R.L. Stein, if you want a lesson that is very, very much... Like, he, like where do you get your ideas? He gave you the three places you get your ideas. There you go. So it was kind of funny because you might look at the list of classes and go, well, I don't really read any of these people's books. You don't really need to. You just need to, to learn from them. So... Uh, so one side of the coin is that I might learn one or two new things that I've just not heard before. And I've read a lot of craft books. I've taken a lot of, um, I've been to seminars. I've been to conventions. I've been, I've taken so many classes. I've read so many books that it's getting to the point where hearing new information is really novel. So that is worth it to me. The other side of the coin 
is that hearing things I already believe from people I respect is really useful. So Neil Gaiman, and I apologize if I miss say his name, I've only read it, like so many readers, um, he talked about um, these are the things, if you want to be a successful author, you need to do these three things. And I was doing those three things, and that was encouraging. And I feel like so much of writing is about staying the course for a long period of time. And genuine encouragement that gets into your heart and lifts you up is so valuable. So um, reading these authors who, is, who say things like, this is what I believe makes a successful author, this makes a good author. And it's usually, for me, I really relate to hard work. So when they say, uh, when Neil says you have to start things, you have to finish things, you have to live an interesting life. You have to go live. Uh, to me, that's incredibly encouraging because I'm starting things, I'm finishing things, and I'm, I'm an older writer. So, you know, uh, so for me, that's, I go, okay, all of those past experiences, all those years of seeing people with conflict and personality types and working different jobs and being in different circumstances has added to my bank of knowledge that I can pull from. So I will say that, yes, you can learn a few new things, but it's also incredibly encouraging to hear that. Now, if you're someone who goes, I don't need encouragement, and I already, you know, I want to find out new novel things, and if they can't tell me five new things, then I'm not interested then great, then you've answered, I'm not going to try to convince you otherwise. I want you to either listen to why I like it and say, yes, that's me, I want that, or to say, no, that's not me. So I will, um, so I will find, uh, I will, so okay, so technically, the technical aspects of this is that you can watch on, um, on the computer, but you, there is an app you can use, and it works a lot like your podcast app, meaning that you can lock your phone, stick it in your pocket, and listen with, your, listen with headphones, which is how I listen to a majority of them. Um, I've listened to, um, I'm going to pull them up right now, like my phone just rearranged. So there's an app. It has uh, little mini lessons, so you can go through and you can do mini lessons. There's, my favorite is somewhere on here is a resume like horizontal thing and it shows you what lessons you left out so i aaron sorkin the the west wing writer's room i can see annie Leibovitz portrait photography serena williams ground strokes um and even so even um i'm gonna for serena williams i don't play tennis but she has a couple on mental toughness on on dealing with that um uh, so, Developing Your Style by Martin Scorsese, Mastering Delivery by Chris Voss, who is a ne hostage negotiator. And as writers, it's useful for me to get the perspective of what is a ba ballerina. Now, this class wouldn't be enough for me to write a ballerina as first-person point of view, but maybe I have a side character and I use a couple of concepts that she shares about, you know, this or that. So, um, like for instance, Chris Hadfield is an astronaut. He has a gorgeous lesson that he just describes what it, what it's like to take off from Earth and go into orbit. And he goes second by second, you know, this is where you say goodbye to your family, blah, blah, blah. From that point forward, you have a handler who does everything. He talks about the pressure. And I've just never heard someone describe minute by minute, second by second, what happens at launch. And it was something that I used in my, my sci-fi book um, just to add... A little bit of character around the edges. So I have taken and finished these classes. James Patterson, Shonda Rhimes, who wrote Grace Anatomy Scandal, How to Host a Murder, Steve Martin, one of the most successful stand-ups of all times, Judd Apatow, who is a stand-up. He wrote Freaks and Geeks. Um, he wrote for Freaks and Geeks. He, I think he worked on Seinfeld. He also wrote The 40-Year-Old Virgin. He's been behind a ton of stuff. Uh, he wrote Crashing, um, R.L. Stein, who writes horror for young audiences, um, Natalie Portman, who's an actress, Dan Brown, who writes thrillers, Neil Gaiman, who does everything, David Lynch, who's a film, Billy Collins, who's a poetry, I, I watched it, I wanted to write poetry, David Balducci, uh, Joyce Carol Oates, who I haven't heard of, but she's the one that if you see the commercial, she's like, the enemy of writing is other people. And she's, she's actually super encouraging. David Sedaris, who's considered the leading humorist in America. Um, and then RuPaul, who, on self-expression and authenticity. So those are the ones I have taken and finished, and I have another probably twice as many 
that I just haven't quite finished. Um, but I'm someone who can watch, I watched um, Helen Mirren, who I thought I had finished the class, I'll have to check, and Natalie Portman talk about their characters, how they find their characters. It's very similar to how a writer finds their characters for books. So if you relate to any of that information, um, that then you might find that Master Class is a great resource for you. If you don't, then maybe it's not, and that's all I have to say. So I hope you are staying safe and sane and inside, social distancing, and that, um, and that, uh, I don't know that you're doing okay. Thank you.